Hey, hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Fujit Split with me, Fujit. Hello. I wanted to have a discussion on something that I'm hearing a lot of lately. Namely, that the more successful Blitz YouTubers are losing views and not gaining subscribers as quickly as they used to. And the reasoning behind that. Of course, the age-old Blitz is dying phrase starts doing the rounds yet again. Must be that time of the year. Whereby, in an attempt to discover why viewing figures and such are going down, the first port of call is to consider whether the game itself is losing players, aka, is it dying? According to Blitzstars, which admittedly only shows a snapshot of the players using the game, there has in fact been a slight decrease in the player base since update 8.4 hit. But this is nothing new, to be fair. The overall player base does in fact ebb and flow periodically. Throw into that mix the fact that COVID lockdowns are no longer in force in a great many places. There are new terms at schools, colleges and universities, all commencing, and other real life stuff is now happening then it's understandable that some of the player base will find more important things to be doing other than watching pixelated tanks on YouTube. Throw further into the mix the restricted audience that is available for solely Blitz content creators, which, in real terms, for an English-speaking audience, is around the 70,000 mark, then at some point, a content creator with a channel that is only dedicated to Blitz will reach its zenith, and it will grow no further. Especially if you've already managed to reach your accessible market, in this case, those who play the game and speak the language your content is actually in. There are other valid reasons for sure, and they go some way to explain why the bigger YouTubers eventually top out to coin a climbing phrase. But what about the game itself? Does the game have any influence over this? Well, for sure, yes it does, in a great many areas. It is true that some players are disillusioned with the game, many for valid reasons. Take new players, maybe the game isn't for them, maybe the grind is too long, or the skill level required is too much. Take the middle order and veteran players, maybe the teams are just filled with less than ideal teammates. The toxicity within the, in the game itself is ruining the game. There are connection issues such as ping and other type of stuff. And yes, I'm looking at you, RN Jesus. On top of all that, whilst we may be getting new lines coming into the game, such as the recent Polish heavies and the highly anticipated Russian lights, the majority of the tanks that hit the game regularly are premium. And most have already been reviewed. They are on their third, fourth, sometimes even fifth time around. And let's be honest, there's only so many reviews on a tank people can stomach. And don't forget, premiums very, very rarely, if ever, get nerfed. So a review of a premium tank six months ago, that is now back in the store, is pretty much unchanged. Yeah, there are always the leaks. In most cases, the information put out from leaks is wrong. It's based upon tanks at the test stage and only really highlight what is going to be entering the game eventually. Obviously players like to know what is coming soon, and it always surprises me that Wargaming don't give more teasers at an earlier stage. I mean, it's not like they need to show you how the tank will perform, or even when it will enter the game. They just need to tease the player base, give them something to look forward to. On top of all of this, we then have the fact that those who play the game regularly and have an access of, say, 10,000 battles, they will eventually get bored with rolling out on the same maps and going to the same places and doing the same thing they did the last time they played that particular map. And yes, I'm looking at you minds, let's all go to the hill. I know Wargaming work on new maps, and I know that map development takes ages from concept to actual introduction. So I can't really fault Wargaming in that respect. But maybe they need to do what they did a long time ago and revise the current maps and make some subtle changes. I personally still remember the old versions of Desert Sands and Oasis Palms. 
two maps that back in the day I thought were fun maps to play. What with the huge sand dunes and the big dips. Rockfield and mines were also different back in the early years. So if it was possible to tinker with the maps then, surely it's possible to tinker with them now, and not just from an aesthetic point like they did recently with mines. I think a revamp of the maps is long overdue, and the maps are really in need of a spring clean. We need to, re or we need to relieve the tedium of copy and paste every time Rockfield comes around and we all troop off to the sea cap. There is indeed many aspects of the game that are run in the mill, rinse and repeat, so to speak. And it's not easy for a developer to find a new way to bring freshness into the mix. Add into all of this the fact that Blitz is a game, and no one likes playing a game that isn't fun. And this game, unfortunately, is filled with a lot of toxic a-holes who spew hate the instant they enter a battle and continue to do so. Because being an, an anonymous keyboard warrior gives you a shield to hide behind. I mean, people generally play a game, as I said, to have fun, to be entertained. But where is the fun when you're told to go and die, or you're called a horrible name, or just trolled, bullied and harassed for the duration of a battle that then continues into the garage? Well, there isn't any fun in that. And most of the players who are older eventually snap. They hit back at these players only to find themselves on the receiving end of a chat ban, or maybe worse. I personally don't think the game is dying, or even close to its death throes. I know the game isn't perfect, no game is really, but I do strongly believe that wargaming needs to have an overhaul somewhere. I myself, along with other official community contributors and some of the content creators, recently had a meeting with wargaming, which included the developers and we raised a lot of issues. And we discovered the issues that face wargaming devs in trying to resolve those issues. And I've issued a video on this already, so go check it out. Now it's not like wargaming don't care or they're not seeking to improve their product. I mean, to an extent, wargaming's hands are tied in some areas for many, many reasons. And one of those main reasons is being the limitation of the technology related to mobile gaming which we really do need to understand because mobile gaming is not like PC gaming and it does have a big effect upon the game. But getting back to my initial point, namely the falling views and the reduced subscribers the bigger YouTubers are experiencing, I personally think people themselves are after something different, something more than reviews, replays of good games, bad teams or toxic players. Yes, of course those things help raise awareness, you've seen one and you've seen them all. Alas, I'm not a big YouTuber for Blitz, so I cannot offer any advice or give any direction as such. But while I see the issues within the game, such issues that do alienate some of the player base, I also see the restrictions within doing just Blitz content on a platform filled to the brim with Blitz content. Nevertheless, I believe the game isn't dying. And considering it is in its seventh year, heading for its eighth, that's quite a long run indeed. Yes, there are other games waiting in their wings, but will they be any better really, or just another copy and paste? Only time will tell. Anyway, I've been Fujit. By all means, comment in everything below. Give me your thoughts. Tell me what you think. And until the next time, stay safe out there. Have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because guys that is what it's all about trying to have some fun and be happy